Welcome back to the finale of What If Padme Remained as Queen. Thank you to all of you who watched the first two parts of this video. To recap what happened in those episodes in the event you haven't seen them, Padme becoming Queen had caused Anakin to leave the Jedi Order, despite being a Jedi Knight, and helped to protect Naboo. But when Dooku attacked Theed, Padme is forced to escape, and Anakin is now in the hands of the Separatists, with only Obi-Wan willing to help from the Jedi. As the pleading hologram of Padme disappeared, Obi-Wan looked disgusted at his fellow council members, and as the meeting disbanded, only Plo Koon joined him, so together they planned for a way to retrieve Anakin. Knowing that Anakin had been fond of Chancellor Palpatine, the two Jedi Masters visited his office, and the Supreme Chancellor was horrified at the capture of Anakin, so dispatched members of his own security force to track them down. Joining the Jedi aboard their starship, they travelled back to Naboo, hoping that Dooku would have left some clue as to where he had taken Anakin. But to their surprise, the ship of the Sith Apprentice was still docked in the palace foundations, and they decided to fire at it to prevent his escape. Dooku immediately turned around to see his ship combusting into flames, then the sound of two lightsabers igniting, as Obi-Wan and Plo Koon demanded to know the location of Anakin. Dooku smirked as he watched the Separatist ship housing the former Jedi, flying harmlessly away into the skies, and the two Jedi leapt towards him with great determination. Targeting Obi-Wan first, he continuously found himself being blocked off by the Keldor Master, who used his mastery of lightsaber combat to push Dooku back into the steps of the palace. The Sith retreated with his powerful lightning attack, and temptingly asked the Jedi if they wanted to know the truth behind the Sith, but they merely stood emotionless and Dooku pointed to Chancellor Palpatine watching with curiosity behind them. The Sith Lord wore a false mask of confusion at the accusation thrown at him, and ordering the Jedi to kill the Sith Apprentice. Dooku knew that these Jedi would not, and they decided to merely arrest him. On the journey back to Coruscant, the Jedi decided to meditate, and Palpatine used his force cloaking techniques to pass the Jedi and open the cell of Dooku. There was only one price for betrayal, and lifting his lightsabers into the air, he pierced the chest of Dooku, and before the Jedi could run to the cell, they are thrown back by an attack from Palpatine, who also placed time detonators to blow up the ship. Watching as what they now knew to be the Sith Lord, leaping out of the rear exit, the Jedi used the Force to try and shield the fireball heading quickly in their direction, before sealing the door to the cockpit. The starship soon split into two pieces, with the half of the body of Dooku burning away, and Obi-Wan and Plo Koon desperately trying to guide their section to the ground. Sliding to a halt, they were fortunate to land on the Jedi Sanctuary of Deveron, and running to the Temple of Edith, they dismissed the protestations of the Jedi Master Halsey, and managed to scramble a transmission to the Council, the Palpatine was the Sith Lord, and had just tried to kill them. The Jedi Council jumped into action, and Yoda and Mace Windu divided the Order, to go and protect the Senators, and track down the Sith Lord. But Palpatine was wise to the attempts of the Jedi, and quickly finding a ship containing Anakin, it was now docked in the newest line of Separatist Dreadnoughts. The Jedi Knight awoke to the sight of his mentor, but to his shock, he saw that Palpatine's eyes were gleaming with a sickly yellow, and tried to attack him, but the Magna Guard stunned him again. Dragging him into Palpatine's executive shuttle, the attempts of the Sith Lord to leave the ship are stopped by Obi-Wan Plo Koon and Padme. Palpatine pretended to be impressed by the Jedi survival of their crash, but proclaimed that now would be their time to die, and directed a lightning attack towards Padme. Expecting to be thrown out of the ship, she is surprised to see Anakin absorbing the attack with his lightsaber, and Palpatine scowled, sneering that Anakin had chosen the side of evil, so that his powers would never reach their full potential. The former Jedi Knight ignored the taunts of the Chancellor, who believed that Anakin would change his mind and become his new apprentice and as the other Jedi arrived, they closed in on Palpatine. The extensive wounds caused by a multitude of lightsabers were the result of Palpatine's demise, and Yoda apologised to Anakin for how the Jedi Order treated him, offering him the rank of Master if he were to return. Anakin refused, returning to Naboo silently with Padme, whilst the Jedi are forced to clear the death of Palpatine in the Senate. In another election for the role of Supreme Chancellor, it is Senator Organa who managed to defeat Senator Binks, and ordered for the Separatists to close down all of their droid factories, before they were forced to pay reparations. Paying frequent visits to Coruscant and Shmi, Anakin continued to resist the calling for the Jedi, deciding to create his own order, 
which would change the direction of the force. That is it for what if Padme remained as queen. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel what if films. And as always, leave a comment on what what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.